All right, guys, I'm not going to keep you in any more suspense. So in third place, but normally last, is the ultimate assassin, stealth assassin even, the Snow Leopard. I love these guys because there's just something so ethereal and otherworldly about them. And as well as that amazingly long tail that you immediately notice when you see them, alongside their thick fur, which immediately makes you want to cuddle them and take them home. They're also just so easy on the eye. I can't explain it, but I just feel peaceful when I look at them. In second place is the BFG of the ocean, the majestic whale shark. I absolutely love everything about them, from the way they move, to their body shape, to their spot patterns, and even the cartilage that runs up from its tail fluke, and, and it just makes me happy. But as much as I love them, they can't take top spot, because that's been reserved for the wolf. And I just love how social they are, and that no matter what, the pack comes first, and the rules they have within the pack structure. And at the same time, everybody pulls together. Of course, I'd be lying if I didn't mention their howl and the link to the supernatural. So stay tuned if you want to learn more about these magnificent beasts. Starting with the brave and adventurous wolf. Did you know that they are known to be one of the best pack animals in the world due to their amazing organization and communication skills, which are vital for their survival? A pack size can range from as little as 2 to 30 members plus. However, the average size is about 5 to 8. But there's been reports of a super pack of about 400 members in a small Russian village back in 2011. Anyway, they have a strict social hierarchy with the alpha pair at the top commanding the whole pack. And below them is a second in command called a beta who, did, who, sorry, who directs the mid-level wolves. And below him are the adults who direct the rest of the remaining members. And it's only the alpha pair that will be breeding once a year. And the breeding period is from February to March, while the gestation period is 63 days when the pups are born. And they will be born deaf and blind and have bright blue eyes. But their eyes change colour until their sixth week when they get their true eye colour. Any member can also challenge another member for their rank and position, including alpha and the right to, to lead. And if the alpha loses... They can move down the pecking order or can leave the pack and be a lone wolf. All pack members must play their part in hunting, protecting the pack and territory. If they're found lacking, they can be kicked out or even killed. Wolves communicate in a number of ways, like vocalizations such as the iconic howl for which they are most well known, or other communications such as whimpering, whining, barking, snarling and growling. Wolves also have a range of howls for different things such as territory establishment which lets, which lets other wolves in the vicinity know to stay out. If they don't listen and intrude, the pack will use a bark howl telling them to get out or be ready for a fight. They also have a special howl that is reserved for the loss of a pack member who is close to another. So when this happens, they will howl as if they are mourning, which they are. However, the other members will not howl back. This can go on for a couple of months and shows their emotional intelligence and reinforces the bonds of the pack members. They will also send Mark to signal their territorial boundaries as well as their location if they are away from the pack. Did you know they have a bite force of about 400 pounds per square inch but in a full attack it goes up to a thousand pounds. They also like to eat undulates which means hooved animals such as deer, moose, elk, caribou, bison, and musk oxen. They hunt using their highly sensitive sense of smell and hearing to locate their prey. They will then test for the weakest and easiest of the group to avoid any unnecessary danger and higher chance of a meal. So when they are when they are attacking the prey they will surround it and the wolves behind the animal will attack the flanks and the shoulders while the ones in the front will bite and lock onto the nose. If the animal runs it will be signing its death warrant. This is because the wolves can chase it for miles without tiring while the prey gets exhausted. And they do this by taking turns running at the prey. And when they get tired, they let another member take over while they fall back until they secure the meal. However, they are still vulnerable to injury and even death as they must watch out for sharp hooves, antlers and horns impaling them. The alpha pair gets first dibs on the kill and prioritize internal organs such as the heart, liver and spleen as their uh, dish of choice and the rest of the pack will get what is left. 
They can eat 20 pounds in one sitting and a male can weigh 30 to 80 kilograms while females can weigh slightly less at 23 to 55. They can also live up to 13 years in the wild and if you're wondering how many teeth they have, it's 42. They can also travel 12 miles in a day and there are three species of wolf which are grey, red and Ethiopian. Greys are found in North America, Europe and Asia while the Ethiopian wolf is found in Ethiopia and red wolves are found in eastern North Carolina. Moving on swiftly, we have the gorgeous whale shark. These gentle giants are the largest fish in the sea and can be found in temperate waters all around the world. And although they are called whale sharks, they are not actually a whale but a type of carpet shark and can reach 39 feet in length or the size of a school bus and weigh a massive 11 tons. And although they are a giant of the sea and have a mouth that opens four foot wide with 3,000 teeth, less than an inch long, they can't actually bite or chew. Instead, they have to filter feed by pumping 6,000 litres of water an hour through their gills, trapping small shrimp, fish and plankton in their gill rakers, which act as a suction filter, which also then allows them to feed on. They can also travel thousands of miles to reach rich feeding grounds. By taking that, but they will also take their time getting there, swimming at a very leisurely three mile an hour. They can also dive down as deep as 1,000 meters below the surface. And did you know these beautiful creatures have teeth on their eyes known as denticles, which act as a protection as they don't have eyelids? It's also possible to identify individual whale sharks just from their spot patterns, as no two whale sharks are the same, similar to a human fingerprint. These animals are oviviparous, which means they produce eggs but they develop and hatch inside the female and no one knows where they give birth but the babies are already 16 to 24 centimeters long roughly the size of a small ruler when born at this size they are at risk of predators such as orca tiger shark and great white sharks but as they grow not so much they were also sexually mature at 30 years old but live as long as 130 years and although gigantic in stature they are endangered due to being caught in commercial fishing nets around the world resulting in suffocation. They are also purposely caught for their fins, liver oil and meat contributing heavily to their place on the endangered list. Moving back onto land and we have the secretive snow leopard also known as the ounce or more fantastically the ghost of the mountain which will become evident as we explain later on. So they have a mass of about 22 to 55 kilograms and get as long as 2 to 5 feet long and are carnivorous, which means they only eat meat. They are known to eat animals such as ibex, Himalayan tar, marmot, pika or pika, small rodents and game birds. But in Nepal they can feed on a blue sheep which is not actually blue and can satiate them for about a week. And as the name Ghost of the Mountain might suggest, they prefer to be at high altitude of up to 10,000 meters and as low as 4,000 meters and on rocky terrain like mountains but also cliffs, ravines and rocky outcrops. Yep, they're a sucker for a harsh terrain where even the toughest humans would struggle to survive. These ghosts are perfectly adapted to their environment as they have short front legs and long back legs which allow them to traverse their terrain like with ease like a ninja in the night. They have fur as thick as 5cm on their back and sides and a whopping 12cm thick fur on their belly. And the coolest part of their anatomy is that super long tail, which can be between 80 to 105cm long, which, is, which has a dual purpose of balance and an extra warmth as they wrap around their body. In addition to this, they have a massive snowshoe-like paws, which allow them to move over the snow easily without sinking and protects them from the cold. They also have a nifty nose, which warms the cold air before it even reaches their lungs. How amazing is that? They can also leap from rock to rock 9 meters apart or 6 times its body length. And also living up to their ghost moniker, they're very elusive and will avoid any confrontation from animals or humans. In fact, when humans are around, they are so conflict averse that they are known to change their behavior and become nocturnal until they leave. As you can imagine, with this type of behaviour being displayed, they are not known to be aggressive, and will in fact forfeit a meal 
if challenged for it. These creatures are solitary in nature, adding to its ghostly mystique, and do not have the roaring capability of their bigger cousins, but have other vocalizations such as growling, chuffing, and a main call described as a piercing yowl. They can have territory, territory as big as 30 to 60 square meters where there's enough food, but if not, it can be as much as a thousand square meters. And they can travel 25 me miles in one night. Their ghostly reputation makes a lot more sense now, doesn't it? Not to mention their camouflage abilities, which comes from its whitish gray color and markings called rosettes, which change shape as they move, making it impossible to spot their shape in the landscape. They only come into contact with other ghosts during breeding season, which takes place between January and March, when they will leave their scent markers to indicate readiness to mate and guide another into their territory. So they have a gestation period of about three to four months, when the female will seek a sheltered rock crevice to give birth to about one to five cubs, but more likely two or three. The cubs are born blind, but already have that distinctive thick fur and open their eyes after about seven days. The female, the female will then raise the cubs alone for about 18 months to 2 years. Snow leopards can live between 10 to 15 years and considered endangered but classed as vulnerable. They live in Asia but are found in 12 countries such as Afghanistan, Bhutan, China, India, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Mongolia, Nepal, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan, with half of the population being in China. They are, however, an apex predator, and as such, a good indicator for habitat health. They are also more closely related to tigers than they are leopards. And there could be, and there could be as much as 4,000 in the wild. But you guessed it, the number is not unknown due to their elusiveness. And 70% of their environment remains unexplored. I hope you enjoyed my top three. So what are yours? Comment below and let me know. And if you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe to enjoy more videos like this and thank you for watching.